Hello and welcome to This Week in Barbados. I'm Lisa Broom and for the next 30 minutes, I'll bring you up to date on the highlights of the week. The news, the sports, the entertainment and a bit of Bajan lifestyle. But we, we begin with news of a big move here in Barbados. <music> Come November 30 of this year, Barbados will no longer have Queen Elizabeth II as its head of state. Rather, the island will have one of its most eminent citizens as its president, as it continues on the road to becoming a republic. Outstanding jurist, Governor General Dame Sandra Mason was officially voted president-elect in an historic sitting of both houses of parliament this week. We are as the candidate aforenamed received 18 votes in the Senate and 27 votes in the House of Assembly, being not less than two-thirds of the votes cast in each house. Now, therefore, I, Arthur Holder, Speaker of the House of Assembly of Barbados, in accordance with provisions of Section 14 of the Constitution Amendment Number 2 Act 2021, do hereby declare the said Dame Sandra Prunella Mason elected as the president of Barbados. Another entry in the annals of Barbados history with that declaration from Speaker of the House, His Honor Arthur Holder. Dame Sandra Mason, Barbados' eighth governor general, now slated to become the country's first president when Barbados officially severs colonial ties and becomes a republic. Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley describing it as a seminal moment for the nation. There is no way that in the third decade of the 21st century we should have the decisions of this parliament or the executive of this nation be ultimately signed off on by those who are not born of here, who do not live here, and who do not appreciate the daily realities of those who live here. And Mr. Speaker, that is not meant to be a statement of condemnation of anyone. In fact, we look forward to continuing the relationship with the British monarch. Dame Sandra will become not only the country's first president, but also the first woman to hold the title. Ms. Motley says many have asked why become a republic now, particularly in the middle of a pandemic. She says as Barbados works to recover from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, address double-digit declines in the economy and adapt to climate change, what will be required is what she calls a Barbadian common sense to keep us anchored. The world is showing that it is not prepared to meet the 1.5 degrees and therefore this country will have about 12 years at best to properly adapt and to do the things necessary to protect our population. And Mr. Speaker, when we add to that the reduced labor force, Mr. Speaker, that is why now this country for the next 12 to 15 years will be asked to perform a duty that is Herculean in task, but it's not impossible in achievement. And it requires a maturity, a discipline, an empathy, a Barbadian common sense to anchor us and to keep us focused on that journey. 
Opposition leader Bishop Joseph Atherley says it was his distinct honour to jointly propose Dame Sandra, one he considers worthy of the signal honour. But the opposition has again registered strong concern about the manner in which Barbados is becoming a republic. We believe the process is wrong, is flawed, and that both a public education program and the formulation of a new republic constitution should precede the country assuming the status of republic. We believe the timing is wrong, not the time or period of history at which we have arrived, for truly that is fully our moment. But this moment and the circumstances which preclude a fulsome celebration and nationally expressed embrace of this step. The country is both distracted and somewhat depressed at this time. Bishop Atherley also suggests a high priority of the new republic headed by a woman must be improving the lot of women at the lower socio-economic levels of society. It cannot be that we elect a woman as our first president, have a female as our prime minister, and not realize that a much more robust effort is imperatively and urgently needed to counter the trinity of evil, that is, economic exploitation of our women in the workplace, sexual harassment of our young ladies in vulnerable settings, or female domestic abuse now perceived as a cultural norm and par for the course. Barbados is expected to become a republic with a non-executive president on November 30th this year. Well, the water infrastructure in Barbados is more than 100 years old. The mains have been plagued by leaks and massive bursts over the years, while some reservoirs are in need of repair and rebuilding in some cases. The situation has left many people complaining bitterly about poor service, with severe outages sometimes for months. However, government says those days are coming to an end. It's the fulfillment of a promise made by the Barbados Water Authority to improve the water supply in Golden Ridge and Castle Grant service areas along with St. Thomas, St. John, St. Joseph and St. Andrew. And during a briefing at Mount Pleasant, St. John, BWA's chairman, Stephon Roberts, discussed the development of the National Water Project. We are also pumping right now roughly about 1 million imperial gallons of water from groves in St. Philip to Vineyard and then up to Mount Pleasant pumping station, which ultimately then flows to the Golden Ridge Reservoir, where is the storage tanks here at Mount Pleasant. We have been in communication with several customers in the St. Joseph area to verify that this is working, and I could say today that I, we've been getting great results from the, from, from, the, from the water that is being supplied to St. Joseph. Upgrades have been completed and backups put in place, and the chairman says the public was included in the BWA's improvement program. Added storage capacity at Mount Pleasant for future development in Palmers, Tree Houses, and Stuart Hill. We also completed upgrades to some of the distributing mains within the area, which, as you know, we've been having water discoloration problems, and this will help with the water discoloration in the areas of St. John, St. Joseph, St. Thomas, and St. Andrew. The project was budgeted at 16.4 million, and to date we have only spent 16.1 million, so we are on budget. While commending the BWA's works team, the chairman says the new water trucks will also bring relief to residents in St. Thomas. We have actually purchased 28 water tankers, new water tankers, at a cost of 7.4 million Barbados dollars. These tankers and the teams are used to be deployed into, to deploy water into the communities. Five precast concrete tanks will also be constructed. These tanks are going to go at Castle Grant. One is going to go at Castle Grant, two at Apes Hill, one at Rising Sun in Christchurch, and one to be constructed at Shop Hill in St. Thomas. We also intend to relocate one of our tanks from Apes Hill, which will be taken down at the St. Andrews location. 
Well, a new gateway was opened up between Barbados and the Netherlands this week with the arrival of KLM Royal Dutch Airlines at the Granley Adams International Airport. Welcome to our island, or as the Dutch say it, welcome up on the island. The KLM Royal Dutch Airlines flight arrived in Barbados, marking an historic moment for the country and opening a new European gateway for it as well. The Dutch carrier was the first commercial airline to arrive at the then Sewell Airport on October 19, 1938. This new flight is a direct air link from Amsterdam Seafall Airport to the Grand Liaison International Airport. Minister of Tourism and International Transport Senator Lisa Cummins called it a major boost for the island's tourism. Super excited to welcome KLM back to Barbados. I think this is such a tremendous moment for Barbados, largely because we are in the middle of a global pandemic. The country is having its own challenges in the region with it, and many countries are simultaneously also facing some of the same issues that Barbados is facing. But yet, uh, from an economic and a commercial perspective, the level of confidence in Barbados is so high despite all of those things. Minister Cummins said Barbados is looking forward to the partnership and it is a reflection of the quality of work being done by the tourism team. KLM will begin to fly to Barbados two times a week uh, with the inaugural flight uh, that has come in, and then we will go to three times a week from November. Later on in the week, we will see a further uh, investment in Barbados through the confidence of our partners, and we're looking forward to sharing that with you when the time comes. Also commenting on the new airline service was chairman of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Jeffrey Roach. He said, while the country is currently facing challenging times, the future looks bright for its tourism product. So every new market that we can tap into certainly provides the opportunity for us to grow our, our business here. Um, I think as we move forward, once we're able to expand those persons who choose to travel to Barbados at this time, um, when they come to Barbados, can have a, a very fantastic Barbadian experience. The University of the West Indies Cave Hill students are pushing back against a move by the administration to introduce software that monitors online examinations. They've actually launched an online petition to get support for their position. There's been a large response to Respondus and not in the positive. Over 2,000 students have petitioned their management of the Cave Hill campus over the new examination management software. A letter from the Guild of Students to the Deputy Principal, Winston Moore, outlined several concerns about Respondus' lockdown browser, a custom browser that locks down the testing environment within a learning management system. The Guild said they've communicated with constituents and their serious concerns, safety, privacy and technological issues chief among them. Some students spoke with CBC about their concerns. It takes over your PC in such a way that it goes straight down to the kernel level. So like it will have control of my webcam, it will have control of my audio, it will have control of my data. Where the data is going, I do not know. And I believe that disrespects the Data Protection Act. Within the science and technology faculty, no one has yet asked us to use this browser. However, I have been able to see the letter, emails and such that have asked other students of the social sciences um, management courses and such to download the browser. And the fact that the browser is invasive, um, you have to scan your entire surroundings with the browser when it first opens up. Um, not everyone is living in an environment where they are able to have a space to themselves. It is a significant contributor to examination anxiety because not only are complete strangers going to be having access to your private information and features on your device, they will also be watching and tracking your every move. In response, the management of the UWI in a release issued to the CBC and students says the software program is aimed at ensuring the utmost integrity of their examinations process. 
Noting that it is used by over 2,000 higher educational institutions, the UWI says the software does not activate the computer's microphone or camera, but seeks to ensure that students' focus and activity during the assessment remain on their examination page. The university also says students who don't want to download the software can do their exams on campus. Well, a cybersecurity expert weighed in on the issue and he advised the UE's administration to provide more details on the controversial software. Now, it came from President of the Barbados Chapter of Information Security uh, Systems Security, that is, Dwight Robinson. He said this type of software is not uncommon in education institutions and is set up to monitor students' actions during an examination. The cybersecurity expert said, however, the privacy and security concerns of the students are valid. Given the functionality of the software, what I've seen from their website, they mention uh, a couple functions that are typical, but they also mention the ability to see and record students while taking the exam. Once you start using a camera to monitor and record someone, there are always privacy concerns. And since university is using a, a vendor, um, to capture or using software to capture this information. There's a concern that information, information being shared with that vendor outside of the need for this exam. And continuing with technology in the education system, schools in Barbados now have an easy way to communicate important information. We heard that it's going through the use of an app called School Alert. School Alert! School Alert is an online platform designed for educational institutions to communicate important messages to parents, students, and the wider community. Chief Education Officer Dr. Ramona Archer Bradshaw says it is vital the ministry embraces technology as this type of communication was once unprecedented. Back then, we were required to wait patiently for radio and television announcements, read about events in the next day's newspaper, or rely on oral communication in order to be informed about happenings. Today, information is readily available at our fingertips through the use of mobile applications. Samantha Bourne is the PRO for the app, and she says School Alert was developed because of the need for an innovative way to keep parents and students accurately informed. This tool was developed in collaboration with the Ministry of Education, Technological, and Vocational Training. School Alert keeps all relevant information at your fingertips. It will ease your mind knowing that the information you are receiving is honest, reliable, and fast. Information like notices coming from the minister or the ministry, alerts from the principal, school closings or evacuations, PTA meetings and newsletters will be delivered to your handheld device and keeping you up to date and well informed. You can receive notifications for any school or narrow it down to one or two. School Alert is simple and easy to use. All information coming through the app would be coming directly from either a principal or a ministry appointed official. General Secretary of the Barbados National Council of Parent Teacher Associations, Nicole Brathwood, says she is impressed with the app. For added convenience, you can select up to five schools so that you get alerts that are relevant and specific to you. I want to encourage all parents to go ahead and download this app and use it so that you can get on-time, real-time alerts and know how to make changes and arrangements for your children. The School Alert app is available for free download for Android on Google Play and on the Apple App Store. Well, time for another break, but when we come back, we'll hear from the island's newly appointed chief education officer.
for staying with us for this week in Barbados. Barbados recently appointed a new chief education officer. She is Ramona Archer Bradshaw, a longtime education administrator. And she sat down with Lisa Lord of the government's Public Affairs Department for a wide-ranging interview. Here's an edited version of that interview, which starts with Mrs. Archer Bradshaw's response to a question about how have teachers been coping during the pandemic. The teachers have done a commendable job in adapting during this pandemic. They have had to transition from the face-to-face -to, -face to the online, and they have done well. Generally, they have done well in making that transition. You see, when you recognize why you are doing what you are doing. You do what you have to do. And the teachers generally have put their best foot forward. I can say also that the teachers have been accessing training from the beginning of last year um, through Erdiston Teachers Training College in the use of technologies, how they can use various software to help their children to understand concepts and I thought that that was very commendable. They continue to do so even as we speak. And I have great faith in our teachers. I really do. There's some, of course, that, you know, need a little help. And where we can help them, we will do so. But I can tell you that many of our teachers go above and beyond the call of duty to ensure that our children learn. You spent about a decade at the Erdison Teachers Training College. Is teaching still a profession that is attracting our young bright minds? Very much so. Very much so. We have, when I say we now, I'm going to put on the Erdison mm -hmm. hat, but I'm speaking as the chief education officer in charge of, of um, those departments. But uh, Erdison, we have a program called the Bachelor of Education program. And every year, there are a number of teachers, a number of persons, I'm not saying teachers, a number of persons who try to get into that program uh, to become teachers. Teaching is a very noble profession. And I think in Barbados, we understand that. From the time I was a child, I'm talking from my experience, I basically worship my teachers. Mm -hmm. I was so surprised one day when I saw one of my teachers in the supermarket. I thought, wait, teachers go to the supermarket? Because teachers were like gods. Yeah, yeah. Yes? I must say that over the years, that hasn't changed very much. And I said very much. It hasn't changed very much. People still respect teachers. Generally, Barbadians still respect teachers. And young people coming up. And I love to hear them speak, especially those entering the, the, the programs at Erdison. You know, I really love children, so I want to go and help children. And I, you know, they're passionate. So I wouldn't say that it is a, a, a dying profession. I would not say that at all. There are still people out there who are interested in teaching because they understand that in teaching a child, the impact on that child, the impact that a teacher can have on that child is so great and they want to be able to make a difference and that is what teaching is about making a difference this is education month mm -hmm. what is your vision for education in barbados as a chief my vision for education is that we continue to live up to the mission of the ministry of education and that is to ensure that we have equitable access to education Number two, to ensure that we create opportunities for children to be responsible, to be creative, to be industrious. In essence, for our children to reach their full potential. That is my vision. So everything else that we do at the ministry is aligned to that. From that, you will have teacher training if you want our children to be creative. And, and to be industrious, we have to ensure that our teachers create opportunities for our children to be that. 
and children don't wake up one morning and become creative and industrious, it has to start from a very, very young age. So we have to create opportunities for our teachers to train so that they can approach education in that kind of way. And a look at some sporting action now. The 2021 Pan American Senior Karate Championships got underway this week in Uruguay. And Barbados is being represented by a two-member team. With competition set to get going on Wednesday, Cody King and Sheridan Graves are putting in the last-minute training in Punta del Este, Uruguay, for the Senior Pan American Karate Championships. Now, with all contact sports on the island, training had to be adapted to be non-contact. And both young men said despite this, they have done all they can to be ready. Preparations have been pretty difficult. Um, for most of the year, we've kind of either been home or not on the entertainment itself because of COVID. We as, we, as a contact sport, were allowed to train for the majority of it. So it's been pretty challenging. And then only really getting a few months of training prior to the trip. It's been not only a physical, but a mental challenge. But I think given the circumstances, I have done the best I could. And feel pretty ready for the competition. It's been pretty difficult preparing for this competition. Obviously we've not been able to have like contact training in person and it's very different. It's very difficult to train a contact sport without actually having like a live person in front of you to kind of test things out on and whatnot. So it's been a challenge but we definitely tried the best we could to, you know, find other avenues of training, focusing on stamina and longevity throughout the bout. So that it's been a challenge, but we've made do with the best of what we have. Having been in Uruguay past few days, getting acclimatized has been going well. Both Kratikans are looking to give it their all. I expect to be competitive. Um, my coach has a belief in me. I have a belief in myself that I can have a decent, good account of myself. So my expectation is to be as competitive as possible and to do what I did in training to the best of my ability. I've improved a lot since the last competition I had two years ago. So my expectation for myself is just to be as competitive as possible and to give my best. And whatever that result brings, I'm proud of. The coach of the team is Cameron King, who prior to the start of competition is engaged in coaching seminars and training, which will see him upgrading his coaching accreditation. Focusing on guiding Cody and Sheridan through the competition, he is confident they will do well. For these guys, um, it's basically their first time at this, um, this level of competition or this type of competition and the preparation was, to, in my opinion, they prepared um, pretty decently for the competition and I believe and I believe that they will do, um, do us proud, they will do their best and I am confident and proud of them. Cody King will compete in the Kumite 75 kg category while Sheridan will compete in the men's Kumite 84 plus kg category. Well, as we said, that competition is actually underway, but only one of the Bajan Karatikas has so far seen any action. Competing in the 84 kilogram category in Kumite, Sheridan Graves lost 5 0 to Dorado Vargas of Costa Rica in round one. In the under 75 kg section, Cody King was scheduled to take on Fucano da Silva of Uruguay. And it was a pleasure bringing you the news and interviews of Barbadians who made the headlines. We'll be back again very soon with another week in Barbados. I'm Lisa Broom. Thanks for tuning in.